I studied abroad in Italy and I love pasta, but pasta is not such a great option for weight loss and wellness goals. Today I'm sharing the only pasta that I eat as a nutritionist. My name's Autumn. I'm a certified clinical nutritionist with my master's in nutrition human performance. And it's not that I never eat wheat-based pasta, but it's definitely something that I consider a treat and I don't have on a daily basis. Regular pasta is very high glycemic load when you factor in true serving sizes. And the glycemic load is a measurement of how much a food spikes our blood sugar and therefore our fat storing hormone insulin. Plus it's not very satiating, so it's so easy to eat more than the body really needs. And I'm personally working on my own postpartum weight loss and body recomposition goals. So pasta isn't really in line with what I'm trying to achieve right now. So instead there are other great pasta alternatives. These are definitely not traditional, but they totally do the job. And the first is zucchini noodles, which I know doesn't really sound super exciting, but especially if you use zucchini noodles to make lasagna, it tastes like the real deal. It's so good. I've shared my zucchini lasagna recipe in the past. If you have not tried that out, you need to. I'll have the recipe linked right up here. But zucchini is extremely low glycemic load, has a minimal impact on blood sugar levels, and is a whole food product. You can either make lasagna strips by just using a potato peeler and peeling a zucchini, or you can make noodles by using a handheld zucchini noodler. I got mine off Amazon. It's a handheld one. I'm pretty sure it was like $9. Okay, the second is spaghetti squash. Now spaghetti squash, when cooked, actually comes out looking very similar to angel hair pasta. It's very nutrient dense, it's very low glycemic load, and it's also relatively really low in carbs. I often use spaghetti squash when I'm having something like a bolognese. Now it does take some time to prep. It's not like zucchini where you can have it done in a matter of seconds. You need to bake a spaghetti squash for about 30 to 40 minutes. But I recently found out that there are pre-made options that essentially look kind of like pasta and cook a lot faster. I think the brand is called Soli. I'll have it pictured up here so you can see it, but it's only just pure 100% spaghetti squash. I haven't tried it out, but it looks like a pretty decent option. Okay, the third are sweet potato noodles. So this is kind of similar to having like zucchini noodles, except you're using sweet potato. So obviously it is going to have more of that starchy texture. So if you're having a hard time transitioning from regular pasta to some of these other alternatives, then sweet potato noodles would be a great option for you. But because they are more starchy, they do have a higher glycemic load, although still a lot lower than regular pasta. And you can make these noodles yourself just by using the potato peeler, or sometimes you can buy them pre-noodled. Usually you'll find that in the preview section. Okay, the fourth are cabbage noodles. Now this is another one of my all time favorites because it's so fast and so easy. All you do is you take green cabbage, chop it up into thin slices, and then you just lightly saute it with some olive oil and some salt. Oh, so good. I love pairing this with like marinara and meatballs. It's amazing. Okay, the fifth is hearts of palm pasta. Now, you'll often see this with brands like Palmini, but I think Trader Joe's and Whole Foods has their own brands now as well. The thing that's great about it is that it's very convenient. It tends to come in these little packages or in cans that you just dump in and it's ready to go. But it can be an acquired taste. Now, some people love it, some people hate it, but it's just made of hearts of palm. It's very, very low carb, very, very low glycemic load. So it's a great option when you are looking to achieve a weight loss goal. Okay, this next one I haven't tried, but I just recently saw and it sounds amazing. And it's egg and ricotta noodles. So the gist of it is you just take eggs and ricotta, you whisk it together and you make a little crepe and then you fold it up and cut it into thin slices to make this fettuccine style pasta. It sounds and looks amazing to me. Plus, since it's made just with eggs and ricotta, it's really high protein. So if you have a difficult time getting your protein needs in, this would be a really great alternative. Okay, the seventh is edamame pasta. Now this is not one that I personally use, but it is one that I will recommend to some clients. It's really high in protein. It also has about 13 grams of fiber per serving, and it's relatively low in carbs. Each serving has about seven net grams. Now what some of my clients really like about this type of product is that it is a prepared food. So you can buy it in a similar type of package as you would just regular pasta, and you can cook it in a similar way way to regular pasta, but just make sure if you are going to use it that you do get organic because it is a soy-based product. Okay, next up are shiitake noodles. Now shiitake noodles are made from a certain type of fiber. Honestly, it's not my personal favorite, but it does contain essentially zero net carbs. It's also very easy to use, which is why a lot of people like it. But the reason why it's not my personal favorite is because a lot of people do get really bloated from it. So best to test out slowly if you do want to test out shiitake noodles. I definitely prefer the other pasta items on this list over shiitake noodles because they are going to be much more nutrient dense. Okay, ninth is red lentil pasta. Now I haven't tried this one out and typically I'm not a fan of these prepared type of pastas, but this one from my understanding from clients might taste the closest to the real deal. Red lentil pasta is made from red lentils and has a moderate glycemic load of about 14 for an actual real human serving size. So it's not going to have a massive impact on blood sugar levels, but if you are carb sensitive, especially if you're very carb sensitive, you'll still want to be wary of these types of items and stick with the lower glycemic load options instead. Okay. Now the 
the 10th are kelp noodles. One serving of kelp noodles has essentially zero nutrients. You're pretty much just like eating air, which might sound like a good thing, but I found that when you make your meals solely around these non-satiating foods, then ultimately you're just going to get more cravings later in the day. So if you do like to use kelp noodles, you'll still wanna make sure that you're pairing it with high quality protein. So making something like meatballs or chicken Parmesan to go along with it. I've tried kelp noodles in the past. They're not my personal favorite, but they are a good option. They just definitely can also be an acquired taste. Now, if you are hesitant about trying some of these pasta alternatives, you really, really need to try my zucchini lasagna recipe. It is so good. It tastes like the real deal. Check it out with this video next. Also, if you're new to my channel and you love this science fact information, make sure you subscribe right here. Come out new videos every Tuesday and Thursday. All right, guys, thanks so much for tuning in and I'll see you in my next video.